what's up beautiful people it's Cinder and welcome to the channel so now we have this very interesting video and it's titled marion candace owens with judge farmer so this is judge farmer candace owens husband and here is um in a podcast um sharing um how he and candace owens got engaged and got married so yeah let's check it out let's hear from him yeah so when did you move to america moved over in 2019 um in full marriage yeah pretty much when i met when i'm so candace and i met in december of 2018 and we got engaged very quickly after 17 days um and uh <laughs> <laughs> thursday just looked up what <laughs> yeah when you i mean just it was one of those things i mean it was a it was very much a god thing um the mm. lord was in control of that whole process and um I mean, it was quite a funny, the full story is quite insane. I mean, the full story was she, she actually came to London to do an event um, with the organization she was with at the time, which was called Turning Point. And um, even the build up to that story is quite funny. So she, she basically, Charlie Kirk, who runs Turning Point and Candace were kind of doing a speaking tour of the US. And um, UK? Mean, no, this was this was still when they were in the US, okay. right? And um, she said to him one day, she was like, I, "I feel like we should go and do an, do some events in in England. We should go and do some events in London." And Charlie sort of was like, "Okay, well, you know, we'd sort of they'd sort of been thinking about doing something or a sister organization in the UK." And so she then became very belligerent about it, and she, when she looks back on it now, she says I had no idea why I was so belligerent about going to the UK um, but there was this kind of great calling that she felt that we need to go and do this event in London we, we should get the Turning Point UK chapter on the map etc etc and so she, Charlie got in touch well she got in touch actually with some people in the UK and sort of said hey heads up we're coming over in December of 2018 and um, that info was relayed to me I was quite involved in British politics at the time um, so it kind of made sense. I'd heard of her organization. Her organization is called Blexit, and which is the black exit from progressive policies. And you know, I was very involved in Brexit, so you know, it was kind of like a synergy there. Mm -hmm. And she came over, and um, she did this. We did this event. They did an event at the Royal Automobile Club in London in 2018, which was. Um, for about 300, I would say three to 400 people. And I was in the audience mm. and I just, something about her demeanor just kind of instantly struck me. I and mean, it was, it was very unusual. I remember messaging a friend of mine, you know, a couple of days afterwards, just being like, there's something different about this girl. There's something this. different about. Had you met her yet or just seen her from we, stage? We'd shaken hands and that mm -hmm. was it. Um, wow. And then the next night I organized this dinner for a whole group of people. So it was her and, Charlie as well and and they actually turned up three hours late because they were doing a a podcast in the countryside and so when they came back into town it was kind of like three hour late but we sort of got to know each other a little bit better and then the next week I flew over to the states to see her speaking at a conference in Florida wow. um, and nothing had been said like there'd been no there had been no romantic overtures at all uh, at any of these at any of this point um, it had all just been very kind of above board and talking about mm. politics and engaging in kind of philosophical conversations. And then at the end of December, we started, like, I started, I called her a couple of times just to kind of chat. And again, you know, just had these long, like prolonged conversations, which were mainly about politics and trying to understand what she wanted to do in life. And at the end of December, um, I was actually flying to South Africa at the time for New Year's and I called her and mm. I just said listen I know this is completely crazy and we've just met but uh, how do you feel about getting married to me? Just real quick <laughs> I missed the bit where there oh was any sort God. of there was literally nothing nothing romantic had been said up to this point okay I mean literally nothing. So, okay, gone, so I missed nothing we, we hadn't gone on a date we had not talked about marriage or the future or anything like that <clears throat> All right, and I just I could, and she said yes no yeah come on she did that didn't happen yeah she <laughs> you're making it up it's all fiction um 
Fake news. Uh, no, it was. It was. This guy's not even Candace Owens' husband. <laughs> I thought it was weird that he would refuse to go to Paris. <laughs> Who is he? Uh, what a strange thing. Some random thing. guy that just pulled off the street in Stephen's That's right. You just, you just, you called her up and yeah. said, "How would you feel about getting married?" Yeah. Were you nervous? Were you serious? I was, or were you partly no, expecting? Was this a pickup line? No, I mean, and <laughs> no, I was a hundred percent serious. I mean, I, uh, you know, I, I felt that. There's a little bit of a, a story there also in relation to like the hand of God in all of this, which is that, mm. um, you know, when I was first up to this point, I had been kind of, I would say, dormant in my faith um, and wow. not really living, you know, a godly life, not really living a life which was, you know, meritous of being worthy, being called a Christian life, really. And, but I had been praying this prayer because I've been saying to the Lord, like, please, can you show me the path before my feet? You know, what is this path that you, what is the path of my life? Where do you want me to end up? What do you want me to do? And um, in the aftermath of first meeting her, about a week later, I had this long car ride, um, this long car journey where I was driving down to Devon, which is a county in England, which is about three and a half hours outside of London. And... I remember having this very powerful, vivid emotion, kind of overwhelming sense of God speaking to me saying, yeah. you were praying this, you were asking for this. So here is, here is the path. There are now two mm. paths before your feet. There's the path that you've walked currently, which is, you know, in many ways, I would say like a, a life not lived for him, right? It was a life lived for me. Um, and then there's a second path which I'm putting in front of you, which is a life which you don't necessarily know the outcome of yet. You don't know where this path is going to lead. But this is the path that I'm putting before your feet, and it's now up to you to choose it. Um, and that car ride that I had, you know, kind of was formative in some ways because um, I just really I felt this overwhelming sense of, I have to act. This is this is it. This is this is that cringeworthy moment that they talk about in the, in in all films where it's like you the have to, you have to choose the the right path for you, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, and so it was that kind of moment, and I realized that God was speaking to me, and 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 so I called actually my dad at the time, and I and I said to him, I said I know this is crazy because next weekend is Christmas, but I'm going to fly to America tomorrow and uh, go and spend some time at this conference where she was speaking at. I'm, I'm getting mixed up in the timeline. Wow. Was it after this car ride where you felt God speak to you that you then called her? So we met on December 11th. Um, we had dinner on December 12th. It was about a week later on December 18th that I had the, the car ride, right. the car journey. Um, the next day I flew to the US. That was when we spent three days together just getting to know each other. Then I flew back back to England for Christmas, gotcha. spent Christmas with my family. And then the week after Christmas was the week that I called her a couple of times, started to get to know her. You know, we, I said, hey, do you want to FaceTime? It was like, I was expecting like a 10 minute FaceTime. We ended up FaceTime for like three and a half hours. Um, and then on December 29th, I asked her to marry me. Wow. So wow. that was the kind of, I mean, it was crazy. I mean, everyone thought I was mad. Everyone thought we were both mad. You know, I mean, it was just nuts. Like. <laughs> My parents were kind of like, what is this? You know, are you being serious kind of thing? And, um, you know, one of my sisters was sort of, she, she actually just laughed about the whole thing. She was just like, this is, this is so not you, but it's also very you, you know? And so she kind of, she came out with that line, which I thought was quite a funny way of putting it. Um, and then, you know, a lot of my friends kind of didn't believe it or they sort of thought that I was trying to hoist something on them. And then they kind of realized that I was being serious and, then a lot of them got on board. Um, and then kind of, we didn't, we didn't just sort of announce it to the world because it was, it was too, it was kind of too much for a lot of people to process. They just thought that it was like a joke. And um, so we kind of held back announcing it. And I think we finally actually put something out about it kind of in February or something like that. Mm. Um, but that was the kind of timeline that we went through. How long were you wow. engaged for until you married? Eight months. Eight months. Yeah, we got married That's in good. August of the following year, 2019. August when? Yeah, August the August the sixth. Yeah, don't mess that up. Yeah. Yeah, August twelfth yeah. for me. Yeah. That's why I asked. Oh, really? Yeah, two thousand and six. Oh wow, that's so cool. Yeah, I had the pleasure of meeting your bride yesterday. Yeah, what an unbelievable cool, woman. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah.
oh my god oh my goodness i don't even know what to say but um what i just got to say is um believe you me god's time is always the best and uh with god nothing is impossible i remember uh, and, um before i uh, picked up my camera to film i remember praying to god to i was just subconsciously just speaking in, um, to god and I, I was like um god show me the clearer path to my future and to my dream because uh, i'm about to embark on a project and i just want and i wanted god's direction to give me the clearer picture of um what it is so i don't um miss the opportunity when the project is set in my face or set is set forward so i know the right direction to take and the di right direction to go and hearing him speak this it just makes a lot of sense it felt like he was just talking to me the exact same way I was just communicating with God and it's beautiful oh my god I know like lots of people when they hear this thing they be like oh no it's crazy you're crazy you are you are you serious but when I when he was speaking I'm like that is God it's only God that can do this and it's wild and it's crazy because sometimes things like this it just um it just do, don't happen with the mere eyes and you'll be like what are you saying but it's beautiful it's amazing to see and um i love hearing stories like this but all the same this is what boils down boils down to good communication and um when the, when um the both of you are in sync and um the both of you um is a mutual feeling of mutual emotions and um is the right timing i mean there is it just um set to the right is the right timing then i mean that was the it was a perfect moment you can see the way he shared he shared it and it was just the right time right moment because sometimes it can be that's why um lots of time we always you always hear the you can you can be at the right place at the wrong time or you can be at the uh, wrong place at the right time and yeah sometimes it happens but this one is just right timing right place right time and um yeah i love um, beautiful stories like this but hey let me know what your thoughts are in the comment down below you can share how you met your partner what what what, what was it and when was a, a perfect moment you realized that this was the right part partner for me and um at what point did you decide that this was the right person you want to spend your future with and this was the right person you saw um life with uh, or you see life with and uh, you decide you want to do life with this person i really love to know if you are a man when was it you decided that um th this was the right partner or this is the right partner and you decided to propose and if you're a woman and your partner proposed and you accepted when, when, when was the time you realized that this was the right time for, for you to accept the proposal and this is the right partner for you to do life with um because sometimes it's different for different people sometimes it takes longer for them to realize that this person is the right partner for them because sometimes it might take years it might take months sometimes it might take weeks and um, some people go go through a series of breakups and everything for them to realize that this is the right person for me but all the same i really love your beautiful story in the comment down below you can share other interesting story and some lessons that you learned during the process because um, we're all here to learn and i really love to learn from you and um also others can also learn from you as well you can share other people's stories you think might be really helpful to also encourage people i really love your thoughts in the comment down below you can also share the useful information you think might be really helpful and until next time see you in the next video